Hi, in this video for Java 2, we're going to experiment with the abstract class idea. So we're going to be creating weapons, bombs, and guns. So I'm going to help you through this assignment here called Assignment 5, and we'll do the coding here in just a jiffy. So as you can see, I have Eclipse open, and I'm going to start a new project, and we'll call it a Java project. I think a good name for this thing is Assignment 5. Alright, so the first class that I'm going to create inside of Assignment 5 is going to be an abstract class. So let's call this thing a weapon. And a weapon is going to have this mark here, check marked abstract. And so the only thing that is different when you check that mark is that it puts the word abstract into here. So you can always type that if you forgot to check mark there. So what does this thing do? Well, weapons can be fired so we're gonna have a method called fire weapon and that thing will have a power method in it or some kind of a value of how powerful the weapon is and then we're gonna print a message that says we're firing the weapon so a pretty simple method we're just going to have a system out print line that says the weapon is fired with a power of and we'll use the integer power now, since this is abstract, we want to extend it. So I'm going to create another class. And this class, we're going to call it bomb. And this is not abstract at all. So since this bomb is a weapon, we're going to say it extends the, the class weapon. And now we've got ourselves a, uh, another item. Let's create another weapon. And this one is going to be called a gun. So a gun is also a weapon, so let's choose extends and type in weapon. Now it's time to create a class that can run these objects, so let's go to new and class. And I'm, once again, I'm going to stick with convention and call it main program. And I'm going to check mark the uh, main args function, so it will start. Okay, so in here we're going to have two different things. So I'm going to have a bomb and that is called weapon one and that is a new bomb and then a uh, gun is called weapon two and that's a new gun now we should be able to use methods from the weapon so even though bomb does not have any code in it it inherits the code from weapon so I can say things like weapon one dot fire weapon there it is and I'm gonna fire it with a power of 5 and weapon 2 is going to fire with a power of 11 okay so now if we were to run this what do we get for an output it does say that the weapon is fired with a power of 5 and a power of 11 so so far b guns and bombs are indistinguishable however we're going to extend or do an override for the fire weapon method so let's come into bomb here and I'm going to do a public void fire weapon method. Okay, so it's an exact name of the super classes uh, method called fire weapon. However, we're going to make it work a little bit different. So the uh, bomb has a fire weapon method now and his output is slightly different. And now it says kaboom, you are blown up with a power of power. Now I'm going to copy this and you can guess that I'm going to override the gun method as well. So let's copy and come into gun and paste gun. And instead of saying kaboom, we're going to have a different weapon. So he says bang, bang, bang. And so now it says you were shot with a power of weapon. So let's see if we can run this now. And so now you can see they both fire a weapon, but they get different results. So the bomb says kaboom and the bang 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 comes from a gun so this is an example of overriding so the original weapon says the weapon is fired it no longer appears anywhere because well the two subclasses have their overriding now let's just uh, comment out gun for instance I'm gonna press the control and slash key so these don't exist anymore they're just comments and run it again and now you can see that the gun returns to its original uh, weapon is fired message. So the override disappeared. 
Let's take him back and put him in play again. Now there's also something called an overload. Let's say that we're into guns here and I have another fire weapon. This time I'm going to erase the parameter called power. So we have two different methods called fire weapon and fire weapon. Now power doesn't work anymore and so fire weapon without any kind of a parameter and let's just say rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Okay so now I have fire weapon with no parameters and it seems to be working differently. Okay so now when I run this again I say bang 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 but I didn't get anything called rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Let's go see why. In the main program I provided weapon 2 which is the gun with a power. What happens if I copy and paste weapon 2 and then take out the 11? Now it has no parameters and the computer is smart enough to say if you give me a power of 11 for my gun I'm going to tell you bang 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 you were shot with a power of 11. If you give me no parameters then I have another method that tells me something different. It says rat -a tat tat and so you can see we have two different versions of fire weapon one of them with power and one of them with nothing and we get different results and so this is called overloading. Overloading means you can take the same function with different parameters and give different results. And so you can be flexible with having different types of inputs into an object and into its methods.